Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. Now, picking a character to play in an expansion can be a really difficult process. So in today's tier list, we are going to be breaking down all of the specializations based on how easy they are to play or how hard they are to play. And this is a very good way to pick a character for yourself based on how much time you want to or have to invest in the game before you start seeing results. Classes that are generally easier, you can do better with with having spent less time so if you're somebody who only has a couple of hours or you can pick something up only every once in a while you're probably going to want something that's going towards the omega easy side whereas if you're somebody who wants a you know a challenge something to develop and mastery and skill development and you've got a lot of time to play the game you're probably going to want a specialization that's on omega hard tier uh specifically so i thought that this would be a great tier list for people in pvp uh to be able to make that type of decision for themselves or help them make that decision for themselves depending on how much time they want or have to invest and if you want to make sure that you're staying up to date with news related to world of warcraft and content like this then make sure to smash the subscribe button your support is greatly appreciated but let's get started so affliction warlock is a very challenging specialization uh in pvp mostly because it's got very limited schools of magic although now you do have two uh which is making it a little bit easier than it was previously um it does have some nice ways to instantly apply dots um through the jinx pvp talent uh specifically i think in battlegrounds scenarios it can be a bit easier to play although it's probably going to end up being a bit weaker um, in battleground blitz just due to its lack of mobility and generally just overall damage isn't as valuable but that's not really the purpose of this tier list we're talking about the mechanics of the specialization now i think affliction can be really difficult i don't know if i want to say that it's the most difficult um, in the game but i'm going to put it probably here on super hard edging down towards one of the most difficult specializations in the game i think with the two schools of magic it's taking it down a tier i think if it still had only one school of magic where you get interrupted you can't do anything that is really punishing that's really difficult to um, learn how to play around you're gonna have a quite a few key bindings um, with the specialization especially with things like amplify curse um, and and things like that so it's pretty key bind dense uh, it can be pretty complicated it's got a lot of maintenance going on, on with it you're not just gonna win spamming one button right um, and you have crowd control diminishing returns to take into account which is something that adds another layer of complexity so I think you know around super hard it's probably a nice spot for it to land uh, for the war within now arcane mage this is also one that is you know very difficult to play I'm just automatically putting it here onto Omega hard um, but it is very highly rewarding. Now, this one does only have one school of magic. You do need to cast. Uh, at the moment, it's tuned to be really powerful, so it might be seen as more of an easy spec, but even when Arcane is overtuned, it's not a specialization that you see like a huge amount of people immediately re-rolling to, because it can be very complicated in terms of getting effective damage out with it. You're not just logging in and immediately starting to see big numbers and feeling really good about it. It's a specialization that the more time you invest into it, the more results you're going to see with it. And if you initially jump into it, you're probably gonna feel pretty miserable. Um, so this is one for people who really want to just like focus in on something and have something to explore for a long period of time and have a lot of time to play basically um, you've got diminishing returns to track you've got low cooldown interrupts that you need to be landing the one school of magic makes it really difficult the rotation is generally more nuanced than a lot of other classes um, so I think it's fair to say it's Omega hard now arms warrior you have to maintain damage over time effects like rend uh, which adds another layer to it it's not like an auto applied uh, effect like a lot of other classes have but it's generally more simple you can kind of just charge in press all your cooldowns in blade storm and uh, honestly with that alone like it lower and mid-level ratings can get you pretty far um just like stunning the thing that you're attacking tunneling it down and, and training something like that can it can actually get you pretty far uh on the warrior so for me i'm going to say that arms warrior is probably like either easy or super easy i might move some of these specializations around as we move through um i think with arms though maintaining the rend makes it a little bit more difficult than like fury warrior for example um and it's, i think it's got like maybe a little bit more key binds i want to say um than fury but maybe it's close now with fury having blade storm and a couple of other on use effects uh, but generally speaking, running in, stunning, popping all your cooldowns can actually get you pretty far on Arms Warrior. Whereas with these classes, it's going to be a lot harder to do that type of stuff. So I think it's definitely going to be more rewarding if you don't have a lot of time to play it. Assassination Rogue is a tough one because Rogue is typically um, a much more challenging specialization to play. Maintaining combo points, deciding what you need to use these combo points on, whether it's damage or whether it's crowd control, um, limited mobility. Assassination isn't as powerfully defensively as other classes, so it can feel very punishing and weak in that sense. But in the hands of a really skilled player, 
it's going to be really good. Like, it's absolutely going to crush it. I think Assassination, honestly, its burst rotation can be a little bit more complicated than a lot of other classes as well. Um, and, it, you know, to initially get it under, because you've got a lot of modifiers that stack together, like Thistle T and then King's Vein uh, and all of these things. Now, you do have two charges of Vanish, but again, you're probably going to want to be using these for um, damage. So for me, I think Assassination is probably kind of on the super hard tier. If you put the time into it, it's going to feel really good and rewarding, I think, in almost all content at the moment with how it is going. But it's not just like instantly log in and your super high rated specialization balance druid this one's a tough one i'm going to try and take my own personal bias out of this one uh because i've seen a lot of beginning boomkins where you just kind of fall over and die and you're not sure how to get through that and that's probably still going to be the case survivability is the big challenge with this specialization pressing moonfire and and sunfire and, and star surge is not like overly complicated uh for the specialization although you do need to cast a lot more um with how the talent rework has been made so i think that is making it more difficult and with lower haste it makes it more difficult to land cyclone so for me i think moonkin is definitely a harder specialization to play in this expansion with its casted spells having more emphasis than its instant damage in previous iterations of boomkin and its survivability being very low at the moment means that it's gonna be tougher to survive on um, you can sometimes run in and just press Incarn, uh, do a bunch of damage, but healing is really high where that's going to be a little bit more difficult to just work for you as opposed to Warrior having Sharpened Blade to counteract that healing. Um, so again, I'm trying not to take into account tuning too much, but it doesn't have the same type of kit defensively, uh, regardless of tuning, that these other classes have. So I think it's definitely going to be harder to play. Beast Mastery Hunter... I'm putting it here, although the re most recent tuning pass completely destroyed its damage and it's like completely unviable, but I'm going to imagine that that's going to get fixed as everything else has been getting fixed week to week when a situation like this happens. Um, and generally speaking, it's just really easy. You just put your pets on the target. You can stay and do your rotation while moving the entire time. Keep pressing your buttons. You got a little bit of mechanics with like maintaining barb shot, but it's not really that big of a deal. And even if you end up messing it up, I think there's lots of ways of getting barb shot resets now that it's not really like a huge deal. So you kind of just run through, press kill command, barb shot, Shot, spam cobra shot uh just keep doing your damage you know landing freezing traps is probably going to be where the skill cap comes in for hunter specifically um and knowing when to trap dps and playing diamond dice in a lot of cases because there's a lot of aoe in this expansion uh to prevent traps from being broken but i'd say generally it's 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 very easy specialization to just jump in and start playing and getting some results uh blood dk is also very omega easy um again most of the tank specs are going to be very easy I'm mostly considering tank for battleground blitz. Um, you're just really tanky. You're like completely immortal. Rotation is really simple. Not a lot of binds. Kind of just mash your head on the keyboard with almost any tank spec. Um, but some are just tuned and have better mobility kits, which make them more powerful. But generally, the tanks are not really that hard to play. So if you're getting into battleground blitz, you want something that's a bit easier a role that's a bit easier honestly playing a tank is <laughs> not a bad idea now brewmaster i think is a little bit more complicated um with its rotation specifically uh and the mobility that it has and deciding when you're going to use these mobilities you got knockbacks you've got to be more more tactical with that type of stuff um so i'm going to put it like here on like super easy because i think most of the tanks are, are going to be pretty easy um and it's also because you're just like almost all the tanks are like borderline unkillable so you're you've got that going for you right your know, defensiveness can determine how easy something is because it gives you more time to react to things so if you're new or not great at the game then being more ta passively tanky is going to make it easier for you to survive which the hunter specs are a lot more tanky now as well uh demonology this one's a tough one you got multiple schools of magic to worry about but you've also got multiple diminishing returns that you got to be aware of constantly tracking those cooldowns you have a lot of keybinds uh, although i think they brought it down slightly um with this expansion and it's possible that you have a little bit less than the other warlock specs because i think generally speaking demo doesn't run amplify curse uh just because it doesn't have the talents available to get to everything that's core at the bottom of the tree which ends up reducing the keybinds a little bit but it definitely has a decent chunk of keybinds um most of your damage coming from pets though makes it a lot easier to play you kind of just put your pets onto the target summon in more pets just focusing on kiting i'd say that demonology is probably somewhere between medium and hard um overall probably like a decent middle ground um for casters but yeah, like maybe here i don't know this is this is kind of a hard one we'll leave it here for now uh destruction warlock you have multiple schools of magic which is really nice with fear chaos bolt and then fire with things like immolate and incinerate um although you can you know you can play around instant damage with shadow burn i would say right now playing around that wouldn't be a great idea but it's also bugged and i don't really want to take into account the bug i'd, I'd rather look, look focus on its kind of mechanics uh i think destro is probably more so on the medium end 
um, for casters. Again, mostly because you hard cast a lot. Casters that have to hard cast are going to be harder because you're going to get interrupted. You're going to get disrupted more. And if you don't know how to play around in those situations, it's going to be harder to climb. But it has instant cast options to get around it. So it's not like impossibly hard, um, like something like Affliction, where you have to get casts off or you're not going to be able to do anything. So for me, I think Destro is probably going to be ending up in the medium tier as well uh, in terms of difficulty. For Devastation, this is a mega easy. It might be the easiest spec in the game. I'm, I'm going to hold my reservations on that, but I, I think Devastation might be the easiest spec in the game. Just fly around with hover pressing disintegrate. Just... And then you're, that's it. You've got like 99% of it for you to start getting some rating. Um, obviously, like landing your stun is going to be important and landing your sleepwalk, but you have multiple schools of magic. You've got Aura Master as well with Obsidian Skills and a low cooldown um and you're decently durable at the moment uh so i i think devastation evoker is a really w nice one to pick if you don't really have a lot of time to play um discipline priest i think it's pretty hard you have to hard cast a lot you've got a high apm you've always got to be doing something effective in the game uh, but you do have multiple schools of magic so if you get kicked you got power radiance to fall back on you have a lot of powerful cooldowns but your immediate like instant healing recovery is pretty low which makes it a harder for a healer i think healers have the ability that to never cast and kind of like top themselves off really easily are going to be a lot easier so for me i think discipline priest is probably like somewhere here like the hard the super hard um tier maybe we'll, we'll leave it here on the on the super hard for now um elemental shaman really easy um you do hard cast a little bit more now because the proc rate on your lava burst is lower so maybe it's not like omega easy um and i know a lot of people are like burnt from the pre-patch so you might be like jumping off at me for doing this and not putting it on omega easy i think it's a little bit harder than omega easy uh, maybe not anymore honestly just because you are pretty tanky um it seems like you actually have a lot of self-sustain uh, it's somewhere between super easy maybe the main the, maybe the main challenge of this is like windshear and grounding um because if you're not using windshear and grounding effectively you can you know lose games pretty easily whereas these classes it doesn't really matter if you don't land the kick 100 percent of the time because these are a really long cd or it's like a two second duration with a long cd whereas ellie has a lot of like defense maintenance i'd say offensively it's really easy um, but defensively it can actually be difficult i think that's probably i think it's fair to put it down a tier from omega easy just because of its uh, defense now enhance can be really hard to play um just because it it's melee range with limited mobility so you got to be really careful about where you're going uh how long you're staying there uh and how you're planning to get out of that type of situation um it, it's it's probably like i want to say probably like hard level difficulty because you have the same defensive maintenance as in elemental except you constantly have to compromise your positioning which makes it difficult you do need to cc as well i think sh shamans that don't use hex are you're completely missing out on a huge, especially when there's no decurse mechanic on a team, whether you're hexing a DPS that you're not attacking or a healer. Um, it's really important that you actually CC. Uh, and I think it's like positioning compromising and you have a ton of key binds. Uh, it's a lot of key binds as enhanced. Um, so I, I think hard is probably a fair spot for it uh, in terms of its spec. Feral Druid, I think this one can be really hard. You've got spammable CC, you've got bleeds that you need to maintain. Uh, durability seems to be a little bit better this expansion. Um, then Dragonflight, like you were the easiest class to kill. I'm curious to see which ends up actually being the easiest class to kill. For Feral Druid, where do we want to place this? I actually think I might be. this might be the first class that I put on Omega Hard. I think this might be the first class. I think that Feral Druid has a really a lot of attacking keybinds, which can make it like really overwhelming initially. Um, you know, you can just run in and press Incarn, not guaranteed to win like that. I think needing to cyclone on like spam CC on a melee class is really hard to be effective with because you're going to be the you know the front runner dealing with a bunch of kicks. A lot of other casters can pull a melee behind a pillar and CC them for free, whereas it's fairly like you're always going to be kind of like in it. Um, and I think the rotation is generally more complicated uh, than a lot of other classes. It's not just like immediately rewarding. So I think this is kind of a fair spot to put Feral Druid. Um, and you've also got off healing to consider. So you need to heal your teammates. It's a lot of targeting keybinds. You got pretty complicated rotation, lots of damage keybinds, lots of keybinds in general. Um, yeah, I think Omega Heart is probably a fair spot to put Feral Druid. Fire Mage, uh, this spec is almost all instant casts, which makes it really easy to play in that regard. Uh, I think uh, like all the mage specializations, fire is probably the easiest spec that you could play just because it's all instant. Although you are fragile, you're very squishy. So it can be, it can take it down because of that. I think just because of its uh, tankiness is their ability, it's going down from super easy to easy. I think it wouldn't be Omega easy because, you know, actually, I don't know, sometimes you can just run away and do damage and win. You don't always have to sheep. There are cases where 
you need to shape like mystery for healers which are looking pretty strong at the moment um, and paladin healers and those types of deals where you can actually get shapes on the healer you do need to look for cc in that in that sense but there are, you know a lot of times you can play like dragon flight where you're just running away um and spamming instant cast and running away and making yourself as untouchable as possible but i think it's squishiness especially with how marksman hunter is looking at the moment it's probably going to be pretty popular um these types of like high burst physical damage classes can make it tough for you to survive which makes it a little harder um but it's still it's still pretty easy just because it's all instant uh frost mage on the other hand it can be very hard um the things that make it hard are playing around enemy dispels you need to make sure that you're landing frost bombs which can be dispelled so baiting dispels with polymorph is like another level of skill development where you got to pay attention to the enemy dispel know that you want to try and set up a frost bomb know which target you can spend the polymorph dr on to bait the dispel or and try and shatter spells with novas um now obviously the easy part of it is you can sometimes just spam ice lance but it's a matter of whether or not the ice lance damage is actually going to be high enough which at the moment it kind of is um but when the tuning comes through whether the ice lance damage is enough to win the game or whether you need to connect spells like ray of frost which is a channeled spell glacial spike which is a slow cast or frost bomb which is a cast that can be dispelled these are mechanics that have a lot of you know counter play which makes it a lot harder to play uh specifically so for me i think frost mage is probably going on like the hard tier um I, I just because of the cc that's required and, and the playing around the dispel um you're pretty durable i would say in a lot of cases except maybe against hunters um but mostly the the mechanics of playing around the dispels and its finishing abilities having a lot of outplay uh makes it a bit harder to play at the moment frost dk this guy is very easy um the damage rotation is like i just played it the other day having not played it in like months and it was just i was hitting the buttons that light up and i was doing top damage and and running people down now you do need to understand like the initial strategy which is like death gripping targets together stacking them and trying to blind them so there's a little bit of like a mechanics there so i'm just running and spam your damage buttons um but once you understand that you're going to start going the distance it's a lot tankier than it was before so i'm kind of hard pressed on this one whether or not i want to put it on omega easy or super easy um i'm gonna put it on omega easy for now i don't think it's like the easiest spec um mostly just because of the setup but it's it's got a little bit of setup like bm hunter it's got to think about a little bit about cc i think omega easy is fair uh fury warrior this is the one which i didn't know like maybe devastation is the easiest range and then fury warrior is the easiest melee um fury warrior just spend buttons that build rage and then spend the rage as soon as possible train down one target the entire game zug zug go go um stun it don't let it play and yeah that's it's very easy i'd say the the hard parts for fury warrior is understanding when you need to stop going zug zug but most of the time stopping going zug zug is just a mistake you just keep playing more dumb if it seems dumb you just keep making it more dumb and then you double down on the dumb and you end up in a really good spot um as fury warrior but it's it's very simple and now if anything you know you got a couple more key binds but those key binds are things like blade storm which which make the spec easier to play because just run in and immune to cc with all your cooldowns and mow people down um so it's gonna make it a bit easier so i think fury worry definitely a bit more in the omega easy guardian druid is omega easy i'd say again like tactics like you have to stealth and cyclone and cap bases so it's like a little bit more strategy maybe with guardian druid and pvp with that regard <clears throat> but it's just spam the buttons in bear and you can't die with frenzied regen like the tank specs in general are just very easy um havoc demon hunter this one i might get some like some flame for this but i don't think it's omega easy um i think like with the with the tools that you have to immune cc uh with the, all the drs that you have as well um setting up a cc chain with like a stun and end cap and a fear um lining up your cooldowns taking them together when do you want to split them um can actually not be that easy i definitely think it's easier um but i think it's probably like somewhere like here super i don't think it's omega easy i think it's got too many cc drs uh and it actually has a lot more keybinds than it has in the past i think like these classes probably end up having actually less keybinds than havoc it's 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 shifted a bit in the past i said havoc is like the easiest but i don't think it is the case anymore uh holy priest you got a lot of instant healing which makes it nice for a um, new player or an, ex or an experienced player um also you have immunities so you can go angel farm and immune everything and get some free time to cast whenever you're like really pressured and you don't know what's going on it's like oh my god what's happening i'm like I, I need this like you can get a lot of nice big heals because of that i think because of that it makes it easier um uh i don't know if i'd say it's like the easiest healer um uh, having things like chastise the cooldown reduction mechanics can give you a little bit more of a skill ceiling to look for so it's got some wiggle room in terms of that sense as far as pushing towards mastery um but i think the instant healing and the immunity give it a nice kind of new player um approach in terms of being able to start having some success with it holy paladin same type of deal being able to bubble and immune cc um and being able to get really big instant heals now with word of glory and avenging wrath but you're really susceptible to crowd control 
you're you're easily maybe uh, a misweaver and you're probably the most susceptible to crowd control so being aware of your positioning matters so much more than a lot of other classes and your cc generally requires getting really close to the game so avoiding cc and getting close to the game to engage with cc uh can be actually really hard so holy paladin's rotation is not super complicated but the positioning that comes along with it um makes it a little bit more complicated so for me i think i'm going to put it on medium i think holy priest generally gets a little bit more a little bit easier uh, yeah i think that's fair i think it's fair i think chastise being a longer range I, I think it's it's either like about the same or or a little bit harder it's it's, it's a tough one for me uh marksmanship hunter i think is omega easy I think that it's mostly just stand in one spot spamming aim shot. And now that you're really tanky, I've seen a lot of MM hunters actually going like leech pets, leech builds, playing the Dark Ranger, and you're like as tanky as a warlock. Um, this is the way it's advancing. So it's looking like you're going to be really tanky. You just kind of stand and press aim shot and run around and kite in a circle. You know, in the past, what made it difficult was that it could be kind of fragile if you got caught in a bad spot. But I think it's generally pretty easy. So BGs to arena, no matter what it is, um, it's going to feel pretty easy. Um, and it's definitely good if you're picking up and don't have a lot of time to play. Mistweaver. So this is the one where it's like deceivingly easy. Um, you have to cast a little bit more than other healers. Uh, although now you've got other ways in Dragonflight to introduce like uh, Thunder Tea Brew or whatever it's called, making it instant cast enveloping so you can get around that. You don't really have like a huge amount of key binds. Um, you're, it, it really depends on tuning with Mistweaver because I think if it's tuned good, it's, it's generally very easy. Um, I'm going to put it maybe here with holy priest at the moment i think it's i think it's an easier healer um you got instant range cc with in cap um trying to think of like anything is like super complicated you can kind of just sit and heal as misweaver which makes it maybe i'm putting it here on super easy <laughs> I, I feel like you can kind of just like sit and heal maybe the fist weaver build again it plays nothing like anything else in the game so it might take a little bit of um you know adapting to how it plays for fist weaver but I think Mistweaver is not that complicated. Maybe I should put Holy Pally a little higher too, though, if I'm going to do that. Um, I think Mistweaver is not that hard. Outlaw Rogue, we're going to put this on to... Hmm. Outlaw Rogue has one of the most demanding rotations. I've played it in Dragonflight, and that's not changing, I think, uh, with how you line up crack shot and how you land your, between your eyes windows and trying to guarantee these Shadow Dance windows and where you're putting your CC and how are you able to position around the map. What makes it a bit easier is that you're just really tanky so I think the fact that you're so tanky brings it down a down a peg. Um, I, I think like Outlaw could be Omega hard if it was fragile, but because it's so passively durable, I think it ends up just being super hard uh, specifically, but the rotation can be a little bit more involved. Uh, Preservation Evoker, actually I think is very hard. Um, you have to compromise your positioning, get close to the game. You have to do damage. Uh, balancing doing damage and when to do damage when to do healing can be really difficult and the limited range exposes you a lot more than other healers that can uh, kind of just sit back and ignore the game so for me i think preservation evoker is probably almost as hard as as disc priest i'm gonna put it here on super hard um just due to the limitations of his positioning although you have multiple schools of magic which is really nice you have some really powerful cooldowns like emerald communion to deal with like panic situations um i think that it's not it's 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 much harder to play um, just because these healers have to balance offense and defense and generally compromise their positioning more than others. Uh, Prot Warrior, your survivability is much lower than the other tanks on this one. I've actually seen Prot Warrior survivability just looks terrible in PvP when you're surviving, trying to be a flag carrier or anything like that. It seems actually much harder in that regard. Um, it's, uh, its rotation is not super complicated, though, so I feel like putting it any lower than Brewmaster isn't really fair. Uh, so put it up on super easy for right now. Uh, prop Paladin, again, I don't think anyone's going to play this in BG Blitz, and in Solo Shuffle, you only fight other Prop Paladins. Um, it, it can be hard in Solo Shuffle. You know, you've got a ton of key cooldowns that you have to decide between what you're going to use. It functions more like a pseudo healer, um, at least in Arena. But in BG Blitz, I just don't see you having the mobility to do it. So for like for me, like maybe it's, maybe it's one of the harder tanks just because of all the cooldowns that you'd have to manage and toss between and the fact that you have to pay attention to healing your teammates for a large portion of it. So maybe it's a little harder. So I'll put it down here on easy. Again, I don't think any of the tanks are particularly difficult to play, but because you have so much like team interaction and your limited mobility, it's probably going to feel a bit harder to play than uh, the other tanks. Uh, Restoration Shaman. This one, again, like all the other shamans, has to deal with all of the wind shearing and the grounding, which is defensive mechanics, uh, which is something that you're going to have to grow into. Uh, it has to cast more than other healers, although it got a lot of buffs and a lot of cooldown readjustments, which are going to make it easier to play. I still think that it's really hard. Um, 
Although in a lot, in some instances you can kind of just sit back and avoid the game. Although in other instances you do need to look for hexes. So it's kind of like enhancement shaman in that regard. So resto shaman for me, hmm, I think also earthen well totem having people stay in your defensive cooldown can be really difficult, especially if you're doing solo content. Uh, I think it's either here or here. I think, honestly, maybe super hard is a fair position for it. Uh, you're going to have to be offensive because you got Lava Surge baseline now, so doing damage is going to be an important component. The defensive cooldowns are harder to maintain with your team, which make it difficult because they're positional dependency. And then Grounding and Winter have a high skill cap. So I think it is fair to put Resto Shaman here on super hard because you're going to just constantly need to be actions per minute, doing something in the game. You can't always just instant heal or top somebody very easily. Uh, so I think I think it's probably likely a fair spot for it. Resto Druid is one of the most deceivingly heal, heal, hard healers to rank because there's multiple ways to play it. If you play a Druid with haste and you're looking for Cyclones and you're trying to avoid CC at the same time that you're doing all this, it can be Omega hard. But if you're playing Mastery Resto Druid sitting 80 yards away with Hots and never casting a single spell and never exposing anything, it's super easy. So this one entirely depends on tuning. And from what I've seen so far, even despite the nerfs, you can still just sit 80 yards away and not actually engage with the game. So for me, I'm putting uh, Resto Druid on just like Omega easy. And this is more, this is a tuning thing. And I think it has to be taken into account because it's how it was in Dragonflight. Um, when Resto Druid can just not engage with the game with Cyclone and just stay 80 yards away, never compromise the positioning, only use instant cast spells. I think it's really easy. You just go Tree of Life. You spawn in these trance that now do like 10 different heal over time effects on your target. I think they send ward, they wild growth. The, the healing output is really easy. It's all instant cast and tree. Um, you almost never have to cast. I think it's a, I think it's got to be put on the Omega easy. Now, if it gets tuned um, where it can't just sit 80 yards away, I hope that it does because I don't think it's adding good gameplay to just be immune to death and tree form spamming instance while its trees heal everything and never has to cyclone or do anything. I don't think that's healthy for the game. But if it, if it is as it is right now, it's going to be Omega easy. So that one's kind of like pending what they decide to do with it. Rep Paladin, I think, is Omega easy too. Uh, just kind of smash your cooldowns, run in, charge in. You've got immunities. Um... Uh, you got some team utility though to be fair with it uh like being knowing how to sanctuary your healer but then i've seen rep paladin at 20 100 2800 rating that just never press sanctuary so it's like yeah you've got this team utility you've got to be aware of but i've seen red succeed not using it so <laughs> i think that's still probably the case for it so it's definitely somewhere between super easy and omega easy um you know it's not i wouldn't say it's the easiest spec right like, i think fury warrior is easier Maybe we'll put it here for now and super easy, but it could easily be Omega easy. Shadow Priest, I think, is Omega hard. Um, you have, I don't know if they added a new school. I guess you've technically got Mind Spike for Shadow Frost, but it's like you have to cast a lot of your damage, um, which which can make you really vulnerable and easy to shut down. It's it's not like immediately new player friendly, but if you do invest into it, I think it's likely going to ramp up, especially if they get a little bit more PvP tuning for Void Weaver. I think they over nerfed the Void Blast damage, uh, at least for PvP, they over nerfed it. Um, so if you've got like a burst build, sustain build, it could be a lot of fun. But generally speaking, if you're logging this first time, you're probably just going to be a training dummy that gets kicked and you're not really doing anything. It's probably going to be a little bit more miserable. But as you invest into it and you get used to fighting in that environment, it might end up actually being a lot of fun and a cool investment for you specifically. So it depends on what your goals are for this. But I th definitely think it's uh, it's more Omega hard. Easier parts of this spec is that stun and silence are just instant and range CC. So you can just stun, silence a healer, put a siphon down, and then get some damage up, which makes it not totally unapproachable so maybe it's yeah i think omega hard is a, is a fair spot for it now subtlety rogue uh, this is a tough one i'm gonna put it on omega hard for now because if you don't know how to play around ccdrs if you don't know how to play around its cooldowns you're not perfectly syncing it up you're probably going to be completely useless um you, you, like you have to know exactly what it's doing um and these are often specializations also that when they're like over tuned not like everyone is immediately re-rolling to them because they're a little bit harder to pick up than other classes. Um, I, and just because you, you need to know so specifically how it works. But once you know that mastery and assuming that it gets tuned to be in a decent position, um, it will likely be a really good pick in terms of competitive viability and investment. Uh, Survival Hunter, I think it's easier to play now than it was before. It's kind of like a proc play style. You're just spamming AOE damage with all fire bombs and explosive shots. Um, the wing conditions, I think, have changed for this one specifically. You still do need to compromise your positioning more than other hunter specs, which I think makes it a lot more difficult um, being melee and just not ranged. And also, I feel like you have a lot more key mines and your rotation's a little bit more complicated, uh, which makes it a bit harder. Still have the trap mechanics. Um, where do we want to put this one here? I think it's probably fair to put it on, like, hard. Uh, with Enhancement Shaman. 
Uh, it's again mostly just because it's it's got the positional compromises. Although you are a lot more tankier than before. I think if you were squishy, it would it would advance a little bit further down on difficulty. But I think you're a lot tankier than before. Unholy DK. It's a lot more complicated than Frost, but not by much, honestly. Um, Performance-wise, I think it's a bit better than Frost, although both DK specs look really strong right now. I think the anti-magic shield to, uh, talents make it a lot easier to play. You just got proc anti-magic shields from your hero talents. It, it's it's really you know high in general. I think probably like here might be a good spot for it. I think what can make it difficult is knowing when to use Chains of Ice and start kiting, whereas a lot of the other melee, it's just zug and do damage or the rotation is really simple whereas on holy dk occasionally assuming you know the tuning and survivability isn't just like permanent invincibility has to acknowledge certain moments where it's like hey i should need to change ice as warrior start cutting a bit or i might die um a little bit more resource management deciding between death strike or damage uh, and then the pet management as well like where is your pet on the map are you off kicking with it adds another layer I, I think it's 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 easier but maybe maybe even here maybe, i want to put it on medium i don't know if it's medium I think I'll leave it on easy for now. I'm kind of tempted to kind of put it on medium. Uh, Vengeance Demon Hunter, a lot of CCs uh, compared to other tanks, but generally speaking, you can just kind of just run in and button mash and you're pretty invincible. <laughs> um, I don't I don't think that it's going to be particularly difficult to play almost any of the tank specs again. Um, and I'm mostly considering BG Blitz, although you will likely be a flag carrier. So like knowing the map and knowing how to kite around the map could be a layer of difficulty to understand, but I, I don't think that any of them are super complicated when it comes to PvP. Uh, Windwalker Monk, uh, you're adding a couple of new abilities with the Celestial Conduits, um, and also Expel Harm is now passive, so you've got a little bit more passive healing as opposed to active healing and management, but knowing where your port is and knowing when to port out, because a lot of other melee, it's just kind of, they just continue to push in and only run in. Windwalker isn't like that. There are moments where you need to be like, I need to run away, and do you know where you've put your port? Are you overextending? This level of awareness compared to other melee DPS uh, makes it a lot harder to play. So for me, I think that Windwalker is probably either on the medium or the hard tier, um, specifically. I'm gonna put it on medium for now. Um, it it kind of depends on matchup, right? Some classes will feel harder to fight, like mages, uh, but other classes will feel easier, like Shadow Priest. Um, so there's some situational difficulty with it, but it's defensive awareness is, is a lot more demanding, I'd say, than the other classes, uh, which makes it a bit harder to play. Um, also, I think like the combo points of the Chi playstyle is a little bit harder to, to get off of initially compared to the other ones that are just cooldowns or buttons light up. Uh, augmentation Evoker, you know, you cast the buff, you got to spam Eruption. I think it's harder than Devastation, but I wouldn't say it's like... And maybe it is a little harder, honestly. Like you've got to maintain um, the scales on the... T you got to pick which target is getting attacked by the melee to switch your scales around. You might have to heal a little bit more. You know, you've got mass to spell. You got a couple other mechanics that can make it harder. So I wouldn't say it's like it's like super complicated, but it's definitely harder than devastation, um, specifically. So maybe even like here, maybe is it really easier than fire mage? I don't know about that. Uh, or is it harder than fire mage? I think it's probably like somewhere in here is like a fair spot. So this is my assessment of the specializations. Main purpose of the list again was to help you pick a spec that's you know if you don't have a lot of time to play, it's better to pick the specs that are aiming towards the top side of this list. And if you got a lot of time to play and you want something that you're not going to get bored of uh, too quickly, then you probably want to aim towards picking a specialization that's on the bottom side of this list, which can be really important depending on how much time investment you want to put into the game. Um, but other than that, thank you guys very much for tuning into the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.